Welcome to the Employco Podcast. I'm Rob Wilson, President of Employco. With me is my brother and partner, Scott. Hello. Jason Eisenhut, our Vice President of HR. Hi, everyone. And today we've got a special guest in uh, in the studio with us, uh, Don Savela, half of the, the Mike and Don, or I'm sorry, the Don and Mike show, <laughs> and more importantly, the founder and publisher of Exhibit City News. Yes. Uh, thank you guys for inviting me out. I, I love visiting here all the time uh, and Ogden... Uh, Ogden Avenue, Ogden yep. Road. Ogden uh, Avenue. Yeah. Yep. And I did not bring this rain with me, just for the record. <laughs> it's better than snow. <laughs> so Don's been a long time, uh, long time friend uh, of ours. We uh, first started advertising with Exhibit C News back in 1998. Wow. So we long were a uh, long time ago. And when you look at uh, uh, where Don's paper was when we first started, it was kind of like the Chicago Tribune style. Yeah. Uh, and then went to a couple colors. And now it's just a fantastic a glossy magazine. It's a really that, nice uh, magazine. And it's thank it. you for your support and participation over those two decades plus. Yeah. And Don, uh, uh, of course, is known as Mr. Trade Show. Yeah. And, and also a shout out to Nikki Navarro working the board for us uh, in between uh, the podcast and the HR chats and uh, and uh, the co-chair of our Employco Social Committee. He's, uh, he's had the March Madness going and all kinds of stuff around here. So uh, yep. thank you, Nikki. So Don, trade shows. It's great to be back. Uh, we've been we were talking off before uh, before we uh, uh, Nikki started recording. You know, the last couple of years, it's back to be great to be back in person. Housewares, uh, Vegas has been booming, so it's uh, it's got to be good uh, to see everyone back again. It, it certainly is, Rob. And you know, I think most of the people in the industry have a very similar feeling. And you know, it's sort of yeah. weird looking back on it, like. Um, I don't know if I have this reversed. Looking back at the two years of COVID, of which this week was the the mm -hmm. show in Vegas where they chopped that last day off that big machinery show, and after that, you, 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 nothing on the strip. You can the ride bicycles changed. down. Yeah. Everything two years ago, and looking back on that, it's you sort of think, how does this go? The days went quick, but the weeks went long. I think I got that back. I just can't believe it's been two years. It's sort of yeah. like a blur, and yeah. to see it coming back so strong. And it's going to come back even better, I think. And, right. and one thing this is going to do for face-to-face. -face, oh, wait a minute. I got, I got I, I, What's that guy? The Bard? Bard. Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare. I, I just thought this up yesterday. Sure. It's on the Don and Mike show today. <laughs> right. To be or not to be B2B. Business oh, to business. That's go. face to face. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's take some of that <laughs> gaps out of that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I was just at McCormick Place today. There's a huge medical show. I'm most yeah. excited that some of the cities that weren't doing a lot are coming back. Vegas yeah, has been cranking. Chicago is shut down. Yeah. When you look at, you know, Vegas is open, Orlando, Miami. Uh, you know, some states that a lot of it depended on the governor. So, yeah. you know, we had a governor here in Chicago or in Illinois and a mayor in Chicago that just shut everything down. And we've masks finally came off here. Uh, just a, a couple just weeks recently, ago, yeah. so it, uh, um, you know, not to be political, and it's an election year, but uh, <laughs> well, and in those beginning months and whoever the trade show industry people were getting no return calls from the governor and mayor, and yeah, just completely blown off. You know, as we look back at uh, at the uh, COVID period, Don, I think the trade show industry did a really good job when you look at uh, ESCA, especially ESCA and EACA, and some of the other associations and groups put together really solid health and safety plans to, you know, they want to reopen, get the men and women of the industry working again and put out very solid plans of how to open safely, you know, with the wider aisles, the social distancing, the temperature, the drones. It, they really yeah, the put a lot of thought drones, into it. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's great to see the adaptability, you know, of our industry, you know, and, a lot of the companies in our industry jump to do other things, and uh, that's not easy to do, you know, on the spur of the moment to, you know, go into a, another sector that you're not really in and, you know, keep your people working, keep some money moving and, you know, keep your mind off the fact that your your whole business world sort of dried up, right, you know, for us. When you think of how many thousands of people are in the trade show business, but so have you heard any, any not fallout, but have you heard issues in different cities? where they don't have enough labor because people went elsewhere. Exactly. And we, we, there's nowhere that we're not hearing that. We're hearing that everywhere. And we already knew we were dealing with an age, aged workforce. And we got to watch how we say that here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, no spring chicken. You know, we are in the HR business. So. <laughs> and down yeah. at McCormick Place today, you know, seeing people, some people I haven't seen in, you know, 10 years or longer. And it's like, yeah, you look at them and then you sort of do that 
thing where like your yeah. hair is a different color, <laughs> this and that, you know, gray, but sure. uh, it's coming back pretty strong in, in a lot of places, but something's going to have to, to give to get more people in our industry. And I think that sort of happens on, I don't want to say on its own, but there's this natural progression because everyone's sort of working on it in their own ways. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, people have to come in there and take those jobs, especially younger people. Yeah. And once word gets out of what great jobs they are, you, you know, it's just, I don't understand some of the younger generations. I, you know, I've never had any kids, but I, I try to look and see what's going on with these guys, you, you know, but yeah. It seemed while the the, the 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 two years we were out, anyone with a the family, they don't want the uncertainty of you know right. the up and down of our industry or working weekends and nights. So anyone that was able to find another gig took it uh, for the most part. So we lost some of the younger people. They were more adaptable because of their technology background, just being of that generation. So they were easily able to move elsewhere. And and here we're all all us uh, lifers are still here. Yeah, yeah. You know when you look at uh, you know. A lot of a lot of people went elsewhere because you have to work. So whether they went into construction, but and you've got so many different aspects of the of the trade show business. You know, you've got the builders, you got the EACs, the GCs. So the you know the the builders, I would imagine, are starting to come back as people want to start spending some money and freshing your booth. You know, if you haven't bought a booth in a few years, it probably needs a you know a, a fresh look to it. Yeah. But uh, is how do you go about? Uh, is, are the unions reaching out to the? Is it to high schools? Is it to, is it to uh, tech schools to try and get that next generation of, of training? Uh, th th that's a large part of it. Uh, yeah, that was sort of the plan uh, back in 2019. We were hitting our peak. We, we were really focused on the problem of where are we going to find more workers to expand, and now, now we're looking for workers to replace and expand existing. Yeah, yeah right. so it's a little different. So Jason had brought up a question when we were uh, before we started recording of of the face of a trade show of how different do you think it's going to change much because what you know you had trade shows were kind of at record levels pre COVID and then COVID people tried to pivot uh, we were talking about the uh, the virtual trade shows which we were in a couple and it just it, it was hard it just didn't work well. But do you think you're going to see the trade shows take on different, you know, the floors are going to be similar, but do you think it's going to be a little bit more interactive or breakout rooms or, or are you going to have that virtual aspect anymore or not? Um, you know, I know a lot of our people in our industry just don't like the digital side of that. And there's always going to be a place for it in conjunction with the trade show, but it's not going to be as much on the show floor. And this just seems to be what people are honing down to. It's not going to be on the show floor. It's going to be the educational portion that goes concurrently with the show floor, the meeting rooms. That's, that's where that stuff's going to take place. Um, you know, there's not going to be any even split and that, and that varies by different industry sector. You know, the medical industry, they canceled so many shows because a lot of their education was already digital online. You know, it's easier to switch over on that and, you know, ouch the pain when you get that email or that call. It's like, you know, that gigantic booth we do where you need the crew of 35 people, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. But when you see the, you know, the machinery shows, uh, even the, uh, the home builder that's something that it's the seeing the new products in on the floor. You can't do that virtually. Right. I don't. I don't think that works. Like the medical industry, for example, yeah. and there it's it's seeing those products and also networking, seeing the uh, seeing whether it's your competitors or your customers. Uh, you know, it's great to be back in person. Yeah, you, you know what? It, it, people didn't realize you know what an important role it played in the general economy. You know, connecting. You know. People with yeah, their customers. The at the trade show. Yeah. 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 How many layers you look on the, you know, from your restaurants in Chicago? Or well, the, new, the new expansion too at the Vegas Convention Center is gorgeous. We walked through that in September yeah. and it's a, or October. It was beautiful. The West Hall. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, we're, we're lucky to have so much out there in Las Vegas. Yeah. You know, we're, we're truly blessed. Uh, uh, you know, uh, now they're going to have a new hotel built there right by the new West Hall, a non-gaming, uh, uh, you know, business hotel. Oh, really? Yeah. Not the, uh, not the... Uh, Fountain Blue. Fountain Blue. Blue. They say Fountain Blue is going to be like open by the end of this year. I just read yesterday. With that the, sounds with a fully functioning casino too. Yeah. Really? I, I, it's, I, th I heard it was going to be a JW Marriott. That fell through. So really? Fountain, yeah, Fountain came in, bought it. They, they had a whole, they had their second announcement, second time around. But yeah, right. so it's going to be really a uh, big nightclub, big casino. So Don, you travel all around the, really the world and to, to trade shows. 
are there new buildings you're seeing? Are there expansions around the uh, around the country? Are there hot areas? Uh, what should you know as our listeners uh, in the trade show and non trade show space? Uh, what should do people be looking for in the next couple of years in the way of uh, trade shows? I think it's going to continue to grow. There are new convention centers opening. There are expansions taking place. You know, these things don't get they don't come on the drawing board overnight and, and they don't get canceled overnight. You know, those are, you know, money has been allocated and, you know, every, every destination is trying to find a way to bring people in to fill their restaurants and, you know, fuel their economy. But, um, it's a lot of space. There's going to be some winners and losers, I think eventually, because there's just so much, but, uh, I think we can handle it, you know, as an industry. I think we can fill it up. We'll see what happens. And yeah. Once the international piece comes back, I mean, that's that's probably a big piece that's holding back a big chunk of the trade yes. show resurrection. Right. And now, point. now travel is open globally. So it, uh, it even since last you know last fall when we were in Vegas, there were still some uh, some travel issues of coming in from uh, overseas. But now uh, globally, you could really go anywhere. And uh, yeah, British it, Airways, no masks on the planes. Yeah. <laughs> Got to so. like that. <laughs> really nice. So the uh, what's next on the uh, Don and Mike show? Well, coming up in April, we're uh, focusing on labor issues. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of changes taking place. And I, Rob, I think you know this, that how many contracts are up for renegotiation right now because during COVID, they kicked the can down the road, both, yeah, they both parties. Them, right. There was not much you can do. So it's, you know, they got some heavy lifting there, but it looks like everything's going pretty smooth so far. I, you know, it's, it's off the record, but I, I heard they came to agreement in San Francisco with the, 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 the decorators up there, the five, but, ten. but they still got to put it through their, uh, their membership okay. to vote on. Vote, so you yeah. can't really, it doesn't matter until they vote on it, but yeah. just seeing that there's not this, you know, the, it, mm-hmm. labor's not fighting the, the management. The unions aren't fighting the, 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 the labor companies. They're the, yeah. they're the same team, but you know, we, we've seen some ugliness over the decades. So it's good to see everything going smooth because we don't need any self-inflicted problems right now. We just need everybody back to work. We don't need major league baseball. <laughs> right. Well, remember <laughs> nobody needs, uh, that. you know, yeah. we've, uh, old enough. I mean, we lived through a few strikes in Vegas where uh, yeah. it was not pretty. Right. Yeah. But I think I think the fact that everyone the common denom- denominator in the trade show space right now is that everybody wants to get back to business. They want to get back working. They want to get back on the floor. And with the labor shortage, I mean, that right. you got, you got to attract talent. Yeah. So, right. I mean, we're, we're seeing it across the board and all of our clients are paying more just for everything from receptionists to, you know, you name it. Yeah, so. it'd be interesting to what that what effect does that have on on the collective bargaining as well, though, because, you know, as as the management versus the labor side, labor is looking for an increase. And when you look at what we're seeing uh, for our clients across the country, wages are going up. Right. Jeez. Yeah, it's it's interesting be, times. Yeah. So, uh, and those of uh, those of you that haven't been by uh, the Exhibit C News, you've got a whole fresh new look in uh, at the uh, at the paper's headquarters. Yeah, Rob. After twenty three years in the same building, uh, you, you don't realize how it deteriorates a little at a time. <laughs> that looks great because I redid it when I moved in, but I redid it in grand fashion. I'm, I shouldn't say I like I did it, yeah. but uh, I'm glad we did. I feel so much the new media, better being at the office. Wall, you know, the media wall is very yeah cool. yeah. 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 And look forward to you guys coming back out and seeing the place. We're entertaining a lot of people from the, the convention center, you know, as they come in from across the United States and everything. So, so you got a new studio, the uh, Don Green and Mike room. studio yeah. in there as well. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. Inviting all the employee co listeners, come on by if you're in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. And you guys say, you know, we never take our show on the road, but uh, you guys do a great job of taking it on the road. Yeah, your you mobile unit's great. Your rig's Whether great. it's Randy, Randy Smith or different, uh, I think you guys were out at the uh, at the ESCO Winter Awards. And so it, uh, it's great yeah. seeing you guys on the road. Yeah, thanks. And we'll be at the, and we'll be in Asheville coming up for uh, ESCO's, uh, you know, a summer conference. Uh, never been to Asheville and there's not many places I haven't been. So I'm looking forward to that. I hear it's a great place. You can buy a couch there. Oh it's my like gosh! The furniture capital, right? Uh-huh. And you can participate in the uh, putting contest sponsored by Employco. Well, I'll definitely be there. <laughs> End of <laughs> June. Yep. And actually, uh, Jason, uh, Jason's coming down for it. He's going to speak on. Uh, we're doing an employee engagement uh, yeah. panel. So, well, I, I we went a little long, but uh, it's always great having Don on the show, and uh, especially in person. It's great to be back in person as well, definitely. And, and uh, look forward to seeing more and more people on the trade show floor. 
Yeah. Thank you, Rod. Scott. Thanks, Dan. Any uh, HR questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Jason at uh, HR at employco.com. Any uh, show suggestions or so, and you can find us on all the social media, Twitter, like LinkedIn, Facebook, and all that. At Employco. Most uh, right. most platforms. I don't. I don't think Nikki and uh, Jason are doing Snapchat yet. I don't think they have a <laughs> TikTok, Snapchat. But, TikTok. But yeah. There you go. And yeah, Scott's got the TikTok dance down. But uh, and I think, I think sure. Nikki's doing uh, Twitter and everything else. So uh, in uh, Instagram. But uh, check us out on social media. Thanks for joining us, and we'll uh, appreciate you listening. Have a good day. Thank you.